Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jake, like the boy's name, and today we are going over frequently asked questions about exosomes. I actually have no idea how frequently these questions are asked because I made them all up myself. And because exosomes may be the future of medicine, I decided to go very futuristic with my hair and makeup today with my space buns. Zenus Lapidus, enough of an intro, let's get into the video. So the first question is, what are exosomes? Exosomes are tiny bubbles released by almost all cell types that help cells communicate with each other. Tiny bubbles. Tiny bubbles. In the wine Make me happy Make me happy Make me feel fine Make me feel fine Tiny bubbles <laughs> Truth! The exosomes that are typically used by doctors today are derived from mesenchymal stem cells from placental tissue, while others are derived from MSCs from bone marrow. Prior to filming this video, I had no idea what the placenta looked like, and then I looked it up, and now I, I can, can't can unsee it. I can't unsee it. Exosomes are a type of extracellular vesicle that range in diameter from 30 to 130 nanometers approximately. Scientists first thought that they were merely trash bags for cells, and therefore neglected studying them for many years. Ugh, idiots. Exosomes contain messenger RNA, microRNA, other non-coding RNAs, as well as proteins, enzymes, and lipids. Exosomes participate in cellular communication, immune regulation, how cells transform energy, which is called bioenergetics, as well as tissue repair and regeneration and metabolism. Zetus lapidus! Exosomes are encased in a phospholipid bilary. Bilary? Bye, Larry. Bye. <laughs> Exosomes are encased in a phospholipid bilayer that protects their important microbiological contents against degradation and makes them stable in the body. Exosomes can be found in blood, urine, saliva, breast milk, fluid and mucus from the lungs, malignant fluid, and basically almost any fluid you can think of in the body. They are released from both healthy and pathological cells. Exosomes carry out the functions of their parent cell. So what this means is that exosomes from pathological cells will carry messages that are harmful to the body. For example, exosomes from the synovial fluid of patients with joint disease lead to inflammation, degeneration of the cartilage, and destruction of joints. Conversely, exosomes from healthy donors will carry anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory messages. Is exosomes always plural? Yes. For example, exosomes therapy, exosomes lab, etc. Unlike Lyme disease, PSA, it's Lyme disease, not Lyme's disease. For what usages are exosomes being studied? Scientists are studying exosomes for their therapeutic and diagnostic potential in a variety of illnesses, including cancer, as well as the following, as well as, <laughs> as well as, as well as, as well as the following types of diseases, autoimmune, liver, cardiac, kidney, lung, and more. Did I forget any? Oh, and joints. They are also used in regenerative medicine, either with or without stem cell therapy. Regenerative medicine aims to restore function of damaged tissues and organs. Seems like the sky's the limit. Currently, most studies are done in rat and mouse models. Exosomes can cross the blood-brain barrier, which makes them very attractive for treating neurological disorders and other brain dysfunctions. Very attractive, like hot. In terms of diagnosis, exosomes may reflect the pathological condition of their parental cells and therefore may act as biomarkers of disease. For example, some scientists have compared the exosomal profile of those with rheumatoid arthritis compared to healthy controls. Once a pattern is found, scientists may be able to use exosomes found in blood samples to better diagnose RA. How do exosomes work therapeutically? Since exosomes contain proteins, messenger RNA, microRNA, and other non-coding RNA, these bio biological messages may modulate gene expression and therefore change the function of recipient cells. Anecdotally, patients who receive exosomes therapy report a fairly potent anti-inflammatory effect that begins shortly after infusion and lasts for several weeks. I can attest to that. I have now gotten two exosomes infusions and this has happened each time. Regenerative and or meaningful immunomodulatory effects will take several months. Tissues do not regenerate in one to seven days, so if you hear someone saying that they feel better quickly, 
differently. They are experiencing that acute anti-inflammatory effect and or the placebo effect. And it is worth noting that the placebo effect for stem cell therapy is quite strong. So I would presume that this goes for exosomes therapy as well. To see regenerative and or immunomodulatory effects, some doctors recommend multiple infusions over several months. Are exosomes an FDA approved therapy? No. Exosomes are not FDA approved to treat or cure any disease or condition. What are the laws around exosomes? Um, uh, um. How many exosomes, infusions, or injections will I need? This will depend on many factors, including the symptoms you are trying to improve, the severity of those symptoms, your age, and other factors, both understood and not understood by scientists and doctors. The anecdotal information that I have gathered leads me to believe that most symptoms, if not all, will require more than one infusion or injection. An example for an autoimmune protocol is one infusion every four to six weeks for three to four months before before the patient starts to see meaningful immunomodulatory effects. As the symptoms resolve, the dosage can be decreased. What is a typical dosage of an exosomes infusion? This is a complicated question with an unclear answer. Labs vary widely and wildly in the doses that they offer. For example, one lab may offer 5 to 15 billion doses, while another lab may offer 25, 100, and 450 billion doses. One of the reasons that I made a Facebook support group for patients called Exosomes Experiences was to collate anecdotal information to hopefully help elucidate this discrepancy. Are all labs counting in the same way? Based on these wide ranges of doses, you would think no, but I don't know. Do exosomes from different labs and different doses lead to different patient outcomes? TBD. How much does exosomes therapy cost? A lot, but less than stem cell therapy. If the labs are not counting the number of exosomes the same way, there's no way to compare apples to apples with regard to price. For Chimera, a prominent exosomes lab, a typical infusion of 5 billion exosomes can cost anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. This includes the infusion plus doctor fee. If you want to know my opinion on it, many labs have their low dose option and their high dose option. A low dose relative to the lab should cost around $1,500 to $2,000 while a high dose relative to the lab should cost around four to five thousand dollars. If you are getting charged much more than this, run. How should I choose a provider for exosomes therapy? My hope for my exosomes experiences Facebook group is that it will become a vibrant community of those who have undergone exosomes therapy, helping those who are looking to do exosomes therapy. So if you have done exosomes therapy, please join. By sharing your experiences with doctors, future exosomes patients can have better information when choosing a doctor. The reason that this group is only open to patients is so that we can be open and honest there. If you want to know my opinion, and actually, if you don't want to know my opinion, then why are you watching this? But if you want to know my opinion, you should choose a doctor that not only has experience using exosomes, but also has deep knowledge on your specific symptoms and illness. For example, if you have severe immunological problems, choose an exosomes provider that has a lot of knowledge and experience in immunology. What is the best exosomes lab? Who knows? That's another reason I created the Facebook group. The field of exosomes is the wild, wild west, with each lab claiming that they are the best. That rhymes. It is a competitive and promising field in which a lot of money will be made. Some common exosomes labs include Chimera Labs and Viti Labs. Exosomes labs are popping up all over the United States and the world. How do labs do safety screening? Each lab on their website states how they screen donors and how they ensure that the product is sterile. Some common safety steps include step one, using young and healthy donors that have been tested for communicable diseases such as HIV, Hep B, Hep C, Zika virus, syphilis, CMV, and others. Step two, the product is tested for sterility and endotoxins. Some labs use a third-party lab for this step, while others do not. In my Exosomes Experiences Facebook group, I made a file where I copied and pasted text from each lab's website on how they do their safety screening. So join the group if you'd like to see that. I want to point out that none of the information on these websites have been fact-checked by me or anyone else. At this point in time, there is technically no foolproof way to ensure that you are receiving a safe product. In my opinion, you should find an exosomes provider that you trust because they are, hopefully, better equipped to evaluate the safety of a product than a layperson. You should ask them how many patients they've used exosomes therapy on, and you should ask if you could speak to one of their patients that have undergone exosomes therapy. 
that's what I did. I would also recommend that you try to find out the reputation of a lab via word of mouth from people who have no stake in that lab. What are the advantages of exosomes therapy over stem cell therapy? Exosomes are not the full cell and therefore cannot proliferate in the body. What this means is that exosomes do not present as much of a tumor risk as stem cell based therapy. Depending on the article that you read, they may still present a tumor risk, so proceed at your own tumor risk. Because of this, more studies are needed to determine the safety of using exosomes in cancer therapy. So another thing is that exosomes are smaller and less complex than their parent cell, which makes them more easily produced and stored and therefore less expensive. They are also less immunogenic, which means that they are less likely to provoke an immune response than full cells. Some other issues with stem cell therapy include ectopic tissue formation, infusional toxicity caused by cells getting lodged in the pulmonary microvasculature, and cellular rejection. I would be lying to you if I said that I totally understood all of what I just said. Since this is an exosomes focused video, I'm not gonna cover the benefits of stem cell therapy over exosomes therapy, but there may be certain conditions that may benefit from the usage of the full cell, either with or without added exosomes therapy. And that concludes our FAQs. I've put all this information into a document in my exosomes experiences Facebook group. Although my channel is Bartonella and mast cell activation syndrome focused, my Facebook group is open to any patient interested in exosomes therapy, whether that be for health helping a bad back, autoimmune disease, or even hair loss. So join that Facebook group if you're interested. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Say bye Bartonella buddies. Hey, wait a minute. Did you copy my hairstyle? Little sisters, am I right? Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. No, very attractive, like hot. Either with or without exosomes there. <laughs> My precious. You are the sweetest little dog. You're the doobie.